Now live from Whitney Media, 1460 WVOX, the Greenberg Report, with Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. You can join in the conversation at 914-636-0110. Now on 1460 WVOX, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Hi, my name's Paul Feiner. I'm uh, the Greenberg uh, Town Supervisor. We have a very interesting uh, program today. Uh, Greenberg is blessed. We have fantastic libraries and we also have a lot of diversity a lot of different ethnic groups and one of the major groups is the Indian and Asian uh, you know community with us a special guest today is Elizabeth Hobson and she's the director of the Dobbs Ferry uh, uh, library she came to Dobbs Ferry a year ago after many years at the Nyack library and she brought with her experience as a children's librarian, teen librarian, and head of outreach, adult programming, and technology. And she's going to talk a little bit about the role public libraries have to play in their communities. Um, we also have Charu Agarwal, who came to the United States in the year 2000 to attend graduate school. And her focus areas of work have been family strengthening services and she has worked since her college days with immigrants and low-income families. Chari, Charu's family moved to Dubs Ferry in the summer of 2016, and um, she joined the Board of Trustees for the Dubs Ferry Library, and she believes that libraries in the country don't just help people in growth and learning, but also in building communities. And uh, we also have Mijo um, Sasaki, She's a senior at the Dobbs Ferry High School and represents the future of Dobbs Ferry and um, is serving as a liaison between the public library and the schools. And she has been a great addition to the library and has helped run several programs uh, last uh, summer. So maybe uh, we could start, Chara, you could tell us just a little bit about you know, what the library does to promote culture. When I moved to Dobbs Ferry Public, um, the Dobbs Ferry Village in 2016, I, I, I started using uh, the library a lot to make the human connection. So I think what our village library does for people is um, not just provide books and materials for their learning and growth, but also provide the human connection. We have a lot of seniors using it, diverse groups who live in our village using a public library. And uh, we see a lot of community building that is happening in our library. And we are also working towards uh, engaging more diverse groups and also building on that community. Uh, our uh, the village of Adopts Ferry speaks. Uh, you know they put together a multicultural event last week, uh, and uh, the diversity committee from the school came up. Uh, they put together the list of languages that are village uh, that are spoken in our village, and there are about twenty eight. That's amazing. Twenty eight languages. That is amazing, um, Amisha. Um, uh, it's unusual. I think it's unusual for a library to have student representatives. Is that is that accurate? It's, it's not that unusual, um, but it is really special when you can attract um, students to your library to, to really work together with the library staff and the library board um, in making those connections. I know it's not, it's not the first time, but I will say it is a really special connection that we've made with Mijo, and we're hoping that we were just talking in the car on the way over here that we hope that she can recruit another really special person because it's been such a great uh, connection for us to have made. And Mijo, what have uh, what got you motivated? What got me motivated to join the library? Right. Um, so it was actually through my own um, school librarian, Miss Gonzalez, at the high school, who actually introduced me to this opportunity, and. I've learned a lot from it, and my role at the library is the liaison between the board and the library and the teenagers that live in Dobbs Ferry, because as um, the library is growing, it needs to accommodate the needs of people, especially young people, and because my generation is more focused on technology, the needs of our generation is changing too, and I think that it's a really great way to help the library grow and become something that is useful to everyone in the community and be accessible to everyone in the this community. This might be a stupid question, but I've asked stupid questions before. Um, you know, your generation uh, uses technology. Everybody uses iPhones. Why do you need a library? Um, I oh think boy. that a library has become and needs to become something that's more than just books, 
but it's also a place like i said before that's accessible to everybody so it's a place of community um, it's a center for education and other services and resources that people who normally wouldn't be able to have those resources can uh, access them uh, we have to take a, a first break there's a couple of breaks in this program and um, unfortunately there's advertising and um and uh, we'll be back in five minutes and then i want to talk a little bit about some of the um, resources that are available okay. um, and some of the um, initiatives that are being taken that are taking place in the library so i'm paul fine a greenberg town supervisor we'll be right back now back to the greenberg report on 1460 wvox once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Good morning, I'm Paul Feiner. I'm the Greenberg T Town Supervisor. And uh, we have a really interesting program today. Uh, my guests are Elizabeth Hobson um, of the uh, Duff Ferry Public Library, Charu Agarwal, um, who is uh, helping to organize a cultural uh, diversity um, experiences at the library, and a student, Mijo Sasaki, who is involved in the library and promoting culture. So why don't we talk about an event that's coming up and it's, it's a continuing um, a series. It's a cultural um, program. Yeah, so our Cultural Explore uh, Explorer series puts a spotlight on the rich diversity of Topps Ferry and the surrounding areas. Like I mentioned before, uh, our little village of Topps Ferry which has a population of about 11,000 people, speaks more than 28 languages. And that's like, uh, you know, uh, a lot of cultures in that small space. And uh, when we came up with this idea in November, we thought we'll provide uh, every two or three months a cultural event uh, that will showcase a different culture or a celebration from a different country for our population in Topsbury at a public library. And... Uh, so uh, we have a committee of three people and we are asking the community to come forward and help us and maybe Elizabeth can um, you know, speak more about that. But uh, our next event is going to be on this Sunday, uh, February 3rd from 1 to 3 p.m. Again, at Dobbsbury Public Library, and this is the Chinese, Korean, and Vietnamese New Year. And uh, I let uh, Elizabeth uh, tell us a little bit more on why uh, we named uh, this uh, event Chung, Che, uh, Solal, and Tat, uh, <laughs> the native uh, names uh, for what they are called in those countries. Right. So we had, um, <clears throat> this series was started in November um, with a celebration of the Hindu uh, holiday Diwali. And we had people from the, uh, the community come in and they brought art objects, they brought food, they brought, uh, we did craft programs with the children to really just introduce, you know, some aspects of a different culture to our community. Um, and we had a really great response to that one. And it really energized this this small group that's, that's the guiding um, basis of the Cultural Explorer series. Um, one of the things, as Sharu said, that's really important to us is to attract community advisors. And so um, this time for our Chenjie, Siolal, and Tet uh, celebration of celebration of the New Year, we have community members, um, we have some Chinese Americans and some Korean Americans who are going to actually be there helping us and presenting from their cultural basis, you know, what what the holidays mean to them. Originally, when we started talking about this, and, and this is this is the sort of geek librarian talk now, um, we were looking at saying we're going to do a Lunar New Year program. And because many uh, communities in, in Asia celebrate the Lunar New Year, we did some research and realized it's not just lunar, it's a solar lunar celebration right. and it's based different cultures have different lunar new years in fact um based on whatever calendar you're using there are some that are celebrated in september some that are celebrated in november so we decided to call it chunje siolal and tet because all three of those actually are based in um the same i i think it originated in the han dynasty in china that calendar is used by these same cultures. And yet, 
the culture celebrate them slightly differently. So we're trying to pull in a lot of different um, aspects to a similar thing. Um, going forward, we're hoping to continue to attract community engagement and community participants in this program. Um, we've actually, we put, a, we put out a little request in our local newspaper, the Enterprise, and got a response from someone who's very interested in bringing indigenous American celebrations to us. That's so, very interesting. Yeah. And it brings the community together. Right, right now, there's so much bigotry all over the country, and anger, and this is something that's really nice. Um, Anisha, are students interested in this? Yes, they definitely are. We actually have a few student volunteers who will be helping out us out with this, but I think also um, because there's so much diversity in the student population as well, that something like this is really eye-opening and it helps to build up tolerance in the young community. So, for example, um, I'm Japanese American and I've also lived in Dobbs from kindergarten all the way until my senior year of high school right now. And I think it's good to introduce something like a cultural um, series that helps explore the different cultures of the world, especially in how globalized the world is right now. And to introduce it now when people are still impressionable and can change their opinions to be more tolerant and have a different perspective is super important. So I think that with different clubs in our school, like the Inter um, cultural club or the diversity committee that something like this is vital to our community. Right. Um, you know, in terms of the diversity, you say, I know that Dobbs Ferry is diverse. Um, is, are the student makeup all over the place or is there predominantly one ethnicity? Um, Dobbs is still kind of um, has a white majority. However, there's a lot of people coming in and more and more people come in every year so I actually have a friend who speaks three languages she came from Egypt and it's really nice having those different perspectives and people from all over the world who know more languages and know more about other people and it's great because even though there is this white majority you're still surrounded by so many different cultures different you know the, the town of Greenberg we have a human rights committee and um, you know so thinking that you might want to be involved in that committee because we want to really promote diversity. Do you find any like bullying among students, you know, who are recent immigrants or um, based on culturing, culture and um, diversity? I think that Dobbs is actually a very tolerant community. There hasn't really been much bullying or anything, especially now because people are more aware, especially um, with all that's going on in the world with right. um, the current political climate but I think that once people start trying to educate themselves by like looking at the news or trying to find out for themselves and to form their own opinions about things that stuff like bullying will tone down and be less of a problem. We have to take another break and I'll be right back in a few minutes. Uh, this is a shorter break. I'm Paul Fine at Greenberg uh, Town Supervisor. We're talking about cultural diversity and the Duff's Ferry Library is promoting um, you know, some great events. And the next event is this Sunday, right? That's right. In, this in, Sunday in, at 1 o'clock. And that's Sunday, February 3rd at 1 o'clock at the Duff's Ferry Library. And if you haven't been to the Duff's Ferry Library, it's overlooking the Hudson River. Um, so <laughs> if you don't like books, which and I hope you do like books, at least you can look at the Palisades. That's right. You can see all the ice on the river right now. It's really beautiful it's to look the most out there. Beautiful views anywhere. Um, so it really would be a treat for people to um, go to this program. You'll really enjoy it. You'll enjoy the spectacular Top Ferry Library. I'm Paul Fine, a Greenberg Town Supervisor. Now back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Good morning. I'm Paul Feiner, and we have a very interesting uh, program today. Um, my guests are Elizabeth Hobson of the Duff's Ferry Public Library. She's the director. Um, Charu Agarwal, uh, who, is, um, who came to the United States in 2000 and is involved in promoting cultural um, you know, diversity. And Mijo Sasaki, who is a senior at Duff's Ferry High School. Uh, what uh, colleges are you going to be applying to? Oh, colleges. Um, I'm thinking my top right now is Northeastern. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm uh, wondering if we could talk a little bit about the role of libraries. 
So, um, you know, f a few uh, months ago, I was reading this article from the American Library Association, which very eloquently puts it that in order to achieve racial equity in our libraries, we have to provide easy access to the population that we are serving. The, by easy access, I think they meant the physical access. So uh, our libraries have to be at places where, uh, you know, people can come uh, back and forth easily. Public transport should be easy for them. Um, and the other thing that they mentioned was that our library should provide materials and books on diverse experiences in our library. So when we started this cultural explore, uh, exploration series in November, uh, I think we are taking it a step forward and saying that we want to provide a diverse programming in our library. So uh, this engages not just a population of Tops Ferry, but also the surrounding river towns. Uh, and uh, say a child who comes into a cultural exploration series, uh, what does he get from this program? Now, uh, you know, I want to say that uh, we are trying to change the trajectory of this child's thinking by saying uh, through our program, by engaging this young ch uh, young children of Tops Ferry and surrounding towns and telling them that every community and every culture matters. Now this child or children are going to grow up equipped with understanding and ready to work with people from different backgrounds and respect differences, but also seek connections. So uh, our cultural exploration series in our library really wants to uh, you know, uh, shine the light on all the cultures that are beautiful village of Tops Ferry has, but uh, at the same point, we do want to, uh, you know, change uh, the thinking of uh, our children today. We want to uh, have them grow up respecting all the cultures. So it's really um, trying to highlight that they're living among neighbors, they have to get along, and they have to understand the different cultures. And by using the library as a forum, you're encouraging better understanding. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> our The Library Board of Trustees at Dobbs Ferry is actually a really great representation of the community. It's a very diverse board. It's a young board, um, and a lot of the people on the board have children from eight, ranging from one year to 18 years old. Um, and so they're very, very connected to this idea of the library being a, a center for the community, a real cultural heart of the community. Um, we've recently been working on our strategic plan and updating our mission and vision statements as part of that. And so our, our it's, it has not been voted in officially yet, but our working mission statement right now for the Dobbs Ferry Public Library is that we are a responsive and accessible library that serves everyone in their pursuit of learning, growth, and human connection. And we really were, were thoughtful about adding that human connection part in there. You know, you said before you had a dumb question about libraries. Are libraries still relevant today? And first of all, as I said, there is no dumb question. But it's, a, it's an important question because many people ask, you know, are libraries relevant? You know, can't I just go out and get it all off of the internet? It's really a dumb question for the uninformed, but, <laughs> the, but I sort of knew the answer uh, because um, I know even the Greenberg Library, there's more people who use the library in, the in this age of technology than used it before the internet which really is surprising. The libraries have really become, as um, um, Mijo said, really a, a sort of a, using technology, it's a community center. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Our vision statement that we're working on really says it best. We aspire to be the cultural heart of Dobbs Ferry reflecting and fostering the vitality and diversity of our village. Now you're on the board of, uh, yeah, board of the yes, library? Yes, I'm mm -hmm. uh, on the board of Tops Ferry Public Library. And I think libraries, when we talk about libraries in today's age, we want to go beyond books. And I think we've done a very good job in moving beyond books. I think libraries in today's time are serving their patrons uh, not just in technology and books and programming, but also in ending the isolation. 
the seniors who come to our library get that seek that human connection even if they are just sitting on the sofa and reading a book they are seeing people around them and so uh, it's it's also the same thing is relevant for young mothers i remember the time when i was a young mother i was isolated i didn't know too many people here or even if i knew too many people here they all were going to work while i was staying home taking care of my kids so when i went to a library i had that community that is that's a, a, do they have like young mothers groups pubs? absolutely yes. we have we have a baby meetup for first time parents um, we're still struggling with getting leadership for that program but we keep it going with the idea that you know that's your first connection to the library and oftentimes a baby meetup group is your first connection into your community if you've been a young person maybe you lived in the city while you were starting your career and now you're starting a family you've moved to the suburbs but you move to the suburbs and how do you get to know people you know we are very siloed you know there's a tendency with the uh, internet availability is like i can work from home i can do everything from my home and I'm stuck in these four walls. And the library really can become a place for community connection. Um, you go out and you meet other new parents and you talk about how difficult it is having a baby at home when you've been working for, for many years and, and now you've got a, a totally different life starting. And it's those points of connection that are so important. I, I do want to say though that, you know, the traditional library as a quiet place and a repository has not disappeared. The things that libraries are doing now is allowing for this vibrant cultural community connection place while still maintaining places for quiet study. I had, um, when the, the board did a community survey last April, and while it, we, had, we had paper surveys and we had an online survey, and I was on the reference desk at one point, and I noticed there were two young students studying upstairs. And I said, hey, ladies, I hope you don't mind. Would you fill out this survey about what, you know, why are you in the library right now? And they turned to me, and they both just sort of looked up and said, it's quiet here, and we can study better. You know, and they were high school students from Dobbs Ferry High School just happening, you know, they were using our space to study. We have one end of the adult reference that is, we, we actually have signs, please, you know, if you're doing tutoring or you're studying in groups, use the other end of the library because this is for quiet work. Right. I was going to ask um, um, uh, uh, Mijo, um, d do people use the library like off off campus? Like I know some libraries have tutorial programs, and some libraries even give um, free uh, museum passes. Okay, um, I think that our library especially has a lot of things to offer so our library does also have museum passes but they also have their own programs where you don't have to leave Dobbs Ferry to experience something that you might not have been able to experience previously such as the opportunity to go to the 3D workshop and be able to 3D print something which is cutting edge technology and like Elizabeth was saying before a library is still a place to study um, it has the atmosphere surrounding you to make you productive and I think that that's an important part of it because a lot of people go to the library for those purposes, for research purposes, for just a quiet place to get things done. What about t tutoring? Actually, that's a really good point, Paul, because the um, Westchester Library System just recently began a new program, um, offering a new program that's called Tutor.com. And it is an online live tutoring site you can get there through the WLS dot, oh, let's see, let's see, it's westchesterlibraries.org um, website. If you go to their research and learning uh, tab on their website, anybody in Westchester County, it's not just Dobbs, but we all can access it. It has a really great, really deep tutoring program that, now. That is uh, fabulous. We have one more break and then we'll be right back. And I'm Paul Feiner, the Greenberg Town Supervisor. And again, this Sunday, when is the program? Uh, this Sunday, 1 to 3 p.m. at Dobbsbury Public Library. We are celebrating Chinese, Vietnamese, and Korean New Year. Right, and again, I should point out that the you know, Dobbsbury Library, without question, is one of the more picturesque uh, libraries right overlooking the beautiful Hudson um, River. There's great restaurants near there.
Now, back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Hi, I'm Paul Feiner. I'm the Greenberg Town Supervisor. My guests are Elizabeth Hobson, Library Director of the Dubs Ferry Library, Charo Agrawal, um, who is uh, organizing a cultural series. The next one's this Sunday. Uh, from what time again? From 1 to 3 p.m. at Dobsbury Public Library, and it's the Chinese, Korean, and Vietnamese New Year celebration. And Mijo uh, Sasaki, a senior at Dobsbury High School. Yeah, I was thinking, Mijo, it's unusual to have a student who's actually a lawmaker. You're now uh, on the board of the library, <laughs> uh, which is like the Congress for the library. Uh, so you're a decision maker. Um, has your opinion of the library changed now that you're on the inside? It definitely has. Um, I think it was like a month or two months ago, I attended my first library board meeting. So at that board meeting, I was actually able to see all the different committees of the library come together. And it really taught me about how an organization works. So everyone was bouncing off their ideas, getting input from other people. And it taught me that a library is more than just a place. It's a community in itself and I was able to see that directly by being a part of the board so do you, do you feel that they treat you as a student or as an equal um, I think they treat me as both because they need my perspective as a student but they treat me as an equal as well because they value my input just as much as everyone else and would you recommend that other libraries in the county um, have student representatives I agreed 100% because you never really know what a library needs until you reach out to the people themselves. So I think that having a voice from a student is very important. And the last question I have is, um, do you want to uh, run for office at any time in the future? Uh, you make a very good impression. <laughs> if, if, you, if you would run against me, forget that. Uh, <laughs> then you make a bad impression. Uh, um, um, I think anything is possible in the future. What, what's your goal? Um, my goal? Um, I don't really know yet, but maybe I'll do something like that. Oh, so you may be a future congresswoman, <laughs> which is actually a nice approach. One of the nice things about getting young people involved on yes. boards at an early age is you could start from Dops Ferry Library and go to governor, um, you know, with a couple little <laughs> in-between jobs like congressperson, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, who knows. Um, but I wanted to ask... Um, and you actually, Paul, if I can just uh, share one thought, and that was one reason why we have Mijo on our board now, because uh, we really want to change uh, how our young people are thinking. We know they are the future. They will be voting on a library funding and also making policies when they grow up. So it's better to get them young than rather start, uh, you know, providing them with cultural exploration series when they are in their 40s or 50s. You know what? I think I want to invite you to the Greenberg Town Board meeting and maybe you could discuss your experiences. Uh, oh. We have a student representative to um, 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 the Parks Board and the Police Board. I'm not sure. I don't think we have a student representative to the Greenberg Library Board. But, you know, I think that it really is something that every library should do. So this we is highly what, recommend it. It's really, I, I'm so excited that uh, you joined us on this program. I wanted to ask you, Shara, you came to the United States from India, right? Yes, I did. And you've been here uh, for 18 years now. For just 18 years. And when were you appointed to the library? I was. Uh, I moved to Dobbs Ferry in summer of 2016, and uh, I was appointed as a trustee starting 1st January 2018. Uh, I applied in about November of 2017, uh, was interviewed and appointed in the So summer. it's really terrific for an immigrant to... Um, be able to be part of the government almost immediately. Yes, so uh, you know the reason why um, our library is so important to me and this is something that I shared with the whole board and also in the newsletter to the enterprise, I come from a developed, uh, developing world. India, when uh, you know the funding comes uh, forward, we are thinking of providing electricity to the village, not a library to a rural area. I grew up in a small town in India. Our library was outdated. Uh, so was the book collections. The librarians were not very happy people. And it was, um, I, I, w I didn't have access to a very good library. So, ha But I moved here in 2000 and I started going to graduate school and all of a sudden I fell in love with the libraries in, that United States offers. Jo not just the free internet that helped me keep in con uh, touch with my family, but also uh, the collection of books that a small public library in Minnesota offered me. So I thought, you know what? 
so much funding and so many resources are poured into these public libraries and they are such a valuable piece of uh, our institutions that are provided to the public first of all free of cost there is no taboo in attending a library program it helps you um, um, you know, um, end your isolation as a young mother, as a senior, as an adult living alone. And for me, as an immigrant, I was able to build a community, a community in my public library. So it, I, I'm really fortunate that I was appointed on the board because I bring a very different perspective to the library coming from the developed, uh, developing world. That is, the developed world. You know, that is great. Does uh, the library um, promote like local authors that? Oh, uh, from different backgrounds. Absolutely, absolutely. We had a local author doing a. Uh, she writes mysteries. Um, coming up, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday on February tenth, um, River Arts is using our space to do an author conversation with three um, authors. I think all three of whom are Salutation from origin. India. Yeah. What? South Asian origin. Yes. 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 And. Um, and so that's going to be a really great program. That's at 2 o'clock on Sunday, February 10th. Um, so we really are about reflecting our community and, and making sure that everyone is, does feel connected to this long-standing, I will say, American institution of public libraries. Um, I'd like to... to kind of uses this moment to promote another program that we're bringing in, which is called American Creed. And in March 24th, I believe, is the first program. It's a, It was a grant that was available through the American Library Association and Public Broadcasting System. And it is, it, we're going to screen um, a PBS documentary called American Creed. And it has to do with what is our American creed and who gets to have an American creed and start a community conversation about what makes us all Americans. That's and great. I loved the idea. Um, Jamie Floyd from WNYC is going to be our moderator. And so that will be a, an open to the public com uh, community conversation about you know, like how do we integrate immigrants and longer Americans and indigenous Americans into this American creed. You know, I, I think it's an important conversation to have right now. And, you know, I feel so fortunate that the board of directors of the Dobbs Ferry Library is so supportive of this type of programming because, you know, you've sort of heard today, this is what we're about. We're about really serving our community and really bringing our community well, together. We have a phone call. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. You know me, Dave Litsky. How are you? Good. And your guest. I just want to let you guys know, the Jewish calendar goes back 5,779 years. It started in 3761 B.C., and then it continued to, uh, it's, I continued to, uh, this year we're celebrating 5,779 years of using the lunar calendar, which is a four-phase, uh, we study the four phases of the moon. Every 19 years, there's seven leap years, and that's how we keep uh, the calendar more or less under control. So include us in your studies because we are an interesting people. Join us. Yes. <laughs> I will. Now listen, Paul, uh, two quick things. Um, did you ever uh, implement, I once gave you the idea, I know you can do it right away, uh, bike riding on certain streets on the sidewalk, you know, maybe one side for the pedestrians and another side for cyclists so they could ride to school. It's a no-brainer. You have the sidewalks. Nobody really walks anymore. So one side of the street, let's say it's you know going on Central Avenue, for example, you go, uh, let's say the north side of Central Avenue. Whether it's, you follow me, right. walking on that side, and the other side could be for bike riders. Wouldn't that be a great idea? Yeah, Sorry. I will bring that up again with the police chief when I get off the air today. I know, but you're in the, I ride every day, and I know you love bike riding, Paul. We have a lot in common. Great, thank you. And last thing, I went to, I go to libraries a lot. And I noticed that most of the librarians don't do anything anymore. They sit in front of their screens all day. They're not really coming up with great programs for the kids and the adults. Uh, so I think it's time for them to, to well, free them up. Well, you should come to the Dobbs Ferry Public Library and take a look. Oh, you know, I know you're rock and rolling, but around here, they're dead wood. It's well, okay. do you know what? Then we, well, we Paul, have to Paul, do you, you know why they do good in your community? Because you are in the streets, Paul. You're a street guy like George Washington. You say, follow me, I'll show you how it gets done. And more power to you and to your guest. 
I think it's wonderful. Great. Have a great day, guys. I hope you go to the Dobbs Ferry Library because... I'm going to go. I'm going to go visit it. Excellent. They do a lot. And you know what? It's really interesting. Sometimes, you know, you get negative comments, but you learn from the negative yes. comments. So... Yeah. It, it makes a library director go home and watch her staff <laughs> and see that they're not ignoring the patrons and they're not coming up with, with good new programming. So if uh, you go to the library, there could be like a secret uh, uh, patron program where people could go and ask the librarian a question. And if they're yawning and not paying attention, <laughs> then you know that uh, they have to be uh, be talked to. But you know, when I've gone to the Doxbury Library, they I've had pleasant, very pleasant experiences, and when I go to the Greenberg Library, you know, I've had pleasant experiences, but I guess they know me, so, uh, and since I'm the town supervisor, <laughs> but, but the thing is, I, I've heard really positive things. We ha we're running out of time, and um, again, thank you so much for, um, for joining us. This was a really good program. Good luck with your um, other programs, and uh, Miju, if you uh, run for office, I would probably vote for you unless you run against me. Okay. Then I would probably <laughs> Thank vote for you. <laughs> Thank so. you, Paul, Thank for you. having us here. This was a wonderful conversation. Great. Thank you very much. Thank and you, Paul. Thank you very Thank much you. for all you're doing to promote cultural uh, diversity and understanding of, of the importance of a diverse community. I'm Paul Fine, Greenberg Town Supervisor. Thank you, Paul.